Carolina, home of the Raleigh Kennel Club and some of the top owners, breeders, and purebred dogs in the country. College basketball is big in this area, but this weekend, dogs are the headliners here in Raleigh. We are coming to you on AKC TV today from the Jim Graham building on the North Carolina State Fairgrounds, and this is the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Marissa Sarbak, host of AKC TV. We are very excited to be here in North Carolina bringing you this dog show. Today we're going to see all seven groups, plus, of course, best in show. For more now, I turn it over to Bill Ellis. Thanks, Marissa. I'm here with our show chairman, Dennis McCoy. Dennis, Raleigh Kennel Club's been hosting dog shows for a long time. This is a big number, right? Yes, this is our 122nd all-breed dog show. And we, Raleigh Kennel Club has been around since 1960. We have this circuit, the Tar Heel Circuit, that we have joined in with uh, four other clubs who help us on this, and we've got some great entries. We've got over 1,800 dogs here today. We'll have some of the top dogs in America being shown. We are very fortunate of the quality of dogs, and we hope that they all have a great day and good luck. It's going to be an exciting rest of the evening. We're going to let you get started with the herding group, so I'll let you call them in. Okay, thank you. We are first getting started with that herding group. Very excited to be here in Raleigh. This is Mr. James Fredrickson from Knoxville, Tennessee. He's going to call his first dog out to get us started here in the herding group. Herding breeds were bred to gather, herd, and protect the livestock functions that they have performed for hundreds of years. Many of these breeds also have different jobs in addition to those, such as police and protection work. We're kicking things off here with the German Shepherd dog. A perfect example of a dog that also does have police work, works with the military. A very high level energy dog, loves to be put to work. This is Cash, Cash is four years old with his handler, Lenny Brown, this afternoon. German Shepherd Dogs, also one of the most popular breeds in America. Our next dog up is the Berger Picard, a French herding breed. This is Mac. Mac is two years old from Salisbury, North Carolina. Being shown by Anya Kelly. The Jay Picards have this characteristic beard and eyebrows that you see there, and those prick ears. And a very recognizable look. The star of the movie, because of when Dixie was, was also a Bergé Picard. That is one of my favorite <laughs> movies with the cutest dog. <laughs> I think everybody out there probably thought it was not not a Bergé Picard. So hopefully everybody learned something today. Nicked up is our first of the three Belgian herding breeds. This is the Belgian Tavern. This is Trip. Trip is eight years old. He's here all the way from The Dales, Oregon, with his breeder owner handler, Michelle Edling. Michelle's a longtime breeder of Belgian Tavern. She's bred some of the top Belgian Taverns for many, many years. Now these dogs do get their name from a Belgian village where that breed was originally developed. And originally, they were both used for hoarding and protection work, but they have developed into such a great companion dog as well. Now 
we get a look at the first of our two collies in the herding group. This is the smooth collie. This is Cage from Carryville, Tennessee. Cage also participates in lots of other AKC sport. Got some agility titles I see there. It looks like some rally titles. These herding breeds are so smart, so athletic, so agile. They excel at those other sports that I just mentioned and many more, such as agility and obedience, rally. We saw lots and lots of border collies dominate the National Agility Championship last weekend. Now our judge is going over the Bouvier de Flandre. This is Hugo. Hugo is three and a half years old from Louisville, North Carolina, with his handler Bradley Butner. And these dogs were developed for that working ability and that versatility. They really have a few descriptions, steady, resolute, fearless, very strong-willed dogs, and they do best with very confident owners. Here is the Boceron. This is Demro. He's just one years old from Hartford, North Carolina. Being shown by one of his owners, Kaylee Bright. Yeah. These dogs are beautiful, no doubt, but they were actually selectively bred to possess great endurance. Originally to drive and protect livestock, and then they also started getting trained as military and police dogs as well. Another very popular breed. This is the Australian Shepherd. Name is deceiving as the breed was not developed in Australia. They were actually developed here in America. This is Malcolm. Malcolm is five years old from Augusta, Georgia. Being shown by his owner, Stacy Hayes. Also participates in rally and herding in addition to confirmation dog shows. And these dogs do really excel in a lot of our competitive dog sports. They also do very well as guide dogs, therapy dogs, drug detection dogs, and even search and rescue dogs. This is the bearded collie. This is Uber. Uber is three years old. He is from Buenos Aires, Argentina. We've got dogs from all over the world. Being shown by Zach Helmer. Beardies are very energetic. They have a great zest for life. And just by taking a look at them, you see that long, lean, athletic build. Also by that really notable, long, shaggy coat. This is the Border Collie. This is Caddy. Caddy is two and a half years old from Torrance, California. Now these dogs did originally have a different name. They were known as the Scotch Sheepdog. They were developed from a few local streams of different dogs on the border of England and Scotland. You know, really bred for working ability, trainability, stamina. Probably why we do see them doing so well in, in our dog sports. And this is the Australian cattle dog.
This is Athena. She is 14 months old from Wafa, North Carolina. These dogs are extremely alert, very courageous. Just absolutely bred to work. They really, really like to have a job. And they kind of need it for that mental and physical activity. Sheepdogs. This is True. He is three years old from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Not too far away. No, a local dog being shown by Don Powell. Sheepdogs became very popular in this country in the late 19th century at early dog shows. They were shown by many different prominent society figures, such as the Vanderbilts, the Morgans, and the Guggenheims. And I do love that they are described as clownish, playful, sociable breed. Belgian breed. This is the Belgian Malinois. This is Zia. Zia is two years old. She's from Virginia Beach, Virginia. With her owner and handler, Tracy Elwes. Mals are another breed that have completely excelled as working military dogs, police dogs. They really do need that confident owner, though. You have to be very mindful because the breeds are very sensitive. They definitely need a job to do. Here's the Norwegian Boo Hunt. Our next dog in the herding group, this is Oscar. Oscar is two years old from Asheboro, North Carolina. A newer breed to the American Kennel Club. Norwegian Boo Hunts were recognized in 2009. So celebrating their 10 year anniversary at AKC Dog Shows. And congratulations. And these dogs were really used as an all purpose farm and herding dog for a long time, but then they they really have become such great family dogs. A lot of people love Next up in the herding group is the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. Another local dog from nearby Durham, North Carolina. Call Polish Lowland Sheepdog Ponds for short. They share their ancestry with Tibetan Terriers and Lhasa Optos, some breeds that we'll see later on in different groups. And back in Poland, that breed was used for herding and guarding since all the way back in the 16th century. So, with that heavy coat, we're definitely going to need some daily brushing. Yeah, you're <laughs> in for some grooming. <laughs> This is the Shetland Sheepdog on the table right now. This is Julie. Julie is two years old from Jackson Springs, North Carolina. Being shown by her breeder, owner, and handler, Jane Hammett Bright. These are one of the most popular breeds for dog sports, too. They do very well in herding, agility, rally, and obedience. Very responsive and very trainable. 
Shelties were developed on Scotland's Shetland Islands, where they get their name. Here is the miniature American Shepherd. This is Ace. Ace is three years old. Being shown by Jamie Flute this afternoon. We've seen Jamie in lots and lots of herding groups on AKC TV with his border colleague Slick, who retired earlier this year. This is such a pr playful, athletic breed. And they do have that stamina for hard work. They do pretty well in a lot of different lifestyles. Here is the Pumi, a Hungarian herding breed. This is Dell. Dell is five years old. Being shown by Linda Pitts. Well, these are really energetic, lively breeds. And even though looking at them, they might look like they shed a bit, but not really. And that coat really doesn't mat easily. They're really going to only have to comb that maybe every other week. On the table right now is the Pyrenean Shepherd, Posey. Posey's five years old from Washington, D.C. with her owner and handler, Cynthia Case. This is Cynthia's first show dog. But she's always wanted to have a show dog. It's been her lifelong dream. Hi, welcome. Excited to see this team. She got Posey because she lives in the city, so she wanted a mid-sized dog, but one that could still be her jogging buddy. Mm -hmm. So, perfect choice. And this very recognizable face on your screen right now is the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Recognizable and very popular. Very popular. This is Denver. He's 18 months old from Asheboro, North Carolina. Being shown by Dee Dee Rogers this afternoon. Now, a lot of people are really familiar with the Pembroke because of Queen Elizabeth II. They are such great family dogs. Really friendly, really adaptable, very sweet. Here is the corgi with the tail, as we say. This is the cardigan Welsh corgi. This is Hank. Hank is three years old from Scotland Neck, North Carolina. Bill, talk to us a little bit about the differences here between the cardigan Welsh and the Pembroke corgis. Yep, so they're completely separate breeds, right? So, of course, the most notable difference is the tail there. The Pembroke don't have a tail. Cardigans do, but there's other subtle differences as well. So their ear shape is a little bit different. The cardigans are a little bit bigger. They come in a few different colors. And do we see a difference with them personality-wise? Very similar personalities, I think, as many of these herding breeds do. They like a job to do. They make great companions. They're very, very smart. They respond very well to training. Have to be ready with your vacuum or your Swiffer <laughs> for some corgis because there is some shedding there. And that's our last dog in the herding group. Being judged once again by James Frederick then. If you're just joining us here for the Raleigh Kennel Club, this is our first group of the afternoon, and we'll be with you 
all the way to Best in Show. I'm Marissa Sarbach here with Bill Ellis. We're for AKC TV. Right now we are looking at the herding group. Our judge here is going to pull some of his dogs out and make a cut, make a short list of dogs to look at again. So we've got the German Shepherd dog, the Belgian Traveran, and the Australian Shepherd. Here's the old English Sheepdog. The Shetland Sheepdog you see there coming out. Looks like the miniature American Shepherd, the Pumi, and both Corgis, the Pembroke, and the Cardigan. And what does this short list give our judge an ability to do, Bill? So it gives him a chance to just have another look at these dogs that he liked. So he'll probably send them around one at a time. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, since he's gone over each of them and watched them move individually, this is a nice way to have another look and remind himself what he felt saw the first time. And it really is personal judge's choice if he wants to see them go around the ring again or if he wants to get them over just to get another feel. Yep, totally up to him what he wants to have these dogs do next. <laughs> Looks like he's just going to pull them out, pull the Australian Shepherd out first, followed by the German Shepherd dog. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi. The Cardigan Welsh Corgi. Looks like that's probably it. The Australian Shepherd is the winner. The German Shepherd Dog is second. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi is third. And the Cardigan Welsh Corgi is fourth. We will be right back in just a few minutes with the start of the sporting group here on AKC TV. City. There's going to be other breeds that are fabulous working dogs for you if you're out on a ranch. He is my best friend. AKC.org is the best place to start because they have all the information about any breed you can think of. What's not to love about this place? <laughs> Home. Home is where family comes together. Home is where you go to relax. Home is where you feel secure. With the AKC line of premium pet products, you can rest assured that your pet feels safe and secure in their home too. AKC, because every home deserves a good dog and every dog deserves a good home. AKC Secure Pet Living Products, available at The Home Depot. AKC TV, the digital network for all things dogs, brings you AKC Live, featuring canine events from around the country. All the action in your own home. Sit ringside at your favorite dog show. Get a front row seat at agility and obedience trials on AKC Live. Only on AKC TV, powered by the American Kennel Club. Find us anytime, anywhere, online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. AKC Live, only on AKC TV. Is your pet trying to tell you something? The Pet Comfort Feeding System by WeatherTech. 100% non-toxic and lead-free. Made from U.S. stainless steel and certified by the NSF. Designed to trap spills and messes. Trust the way you feed your pet. Choose the perfect size and color at PetComfort.com. My favorite part about being a breeder is putting that puppy into a person's hands. The relationship between the owner and breeder is really important. It's something that's ongoing for the life of the dog. Some of them live in my home. Some of them I don't ever want to let go. Running around and playing with dogs all week long, it's nothing better. The most important thing that you're going to want is a healthy dog. When we sell a puppy to a new family, they become part of our family. We're there to help them for the life of the dog. 
We all want more time, quality time to spend on what matters most to us. At the Canine Health Foundation, we are committed to helping dogs live longer, healthier lives. That means more playtime, more walk time, and more love time. Visit us to learn more. Welcome back to AKC TV Live. We are here at the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show. We are right now getting into the sporting group. Our second group of the day, just getting started here with our first dog in the sporting group, the Golden Retriever. The sporting group this afternoon is being judged by James No from Knoxville, Tennessee. Golden Retrievers were developed in Scotland in the 1800s from a combination of a few different breeds, local retrievers, Tweed, Water Spaniels. Irish setters, the resulting combination became the ideal hunting companion for the climate, terrain, and region of the Scottish Highlands. And they really are such a recognizable breed. So many people love the Golden Retrievers. We just had a very cute Golden Retriever puppy on the show. Ask the expert on AKC TV. She was a great guest. <laughs> Here is the curly coated retriever. This is Boo. He's four years old from Tracy's Landing, Maryland, with his handler, Frank Murphy. I know, as soon as you say, as soon as you can. Curly coated retrievers are one of the oldest retriever breeds. They descended from a bit of a combination of the English Water Spaniel, the Irish Water Spaniel, the Poodle some retrieving setters and native water dogs of Newfoundland. We often see them in a solid black color, but they also come in this very striking liver color that we see here on Boo. Here's the Weimariner, the gray ghost of the sporting group. This is Frankly. Frankly is three years old. She's from Mooresville, North Carolina with her handler, Anya Kelly. And according to the standard, those Weimaraners must be built for speed and endurance, a very energetic breed that just needs to run. And of course, that's what we always note at these dog shows is that these dogs are all judged against that written breed standard for that specific breed, not against the other dogs in the ring. That's right. The judge will have all those breed standards in his mind that describe the ideal specimen for each breed. Frankly, just got her junior hunter title. So out there competing with what she was bred to do as a hunter. This is the Irish setter. This is Junior. Junior's two and a half years old from right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is his <laughs> owner and handler, Annette Pusey. These dogs are very outgoing, affectionate. They're a very sensitive breed. They definitely don't need a lot of companionship. Irish setters always come in this striking mahogany chestnut red color. They have a sort of a rollicking temperament. They're very fun and energetic breed. And those puppies do mature pretty slowly, so they can be very rambunctious, sometimes a little bit stubborn even until about three years old. The evidence isn't all there, but the breed is believed to be the background really coming from the Irish Water Spaniel, the Irish Terrier, the English Setter, the Gordon Setter, Pointer, and Spaniels. Here's our first look at the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, another one of America's native breeds. This is Cherry. Cherry is 
four years old. She's being shown in the group this afternoon by Aaron Wilkerson. You can always tell them apart because of that protective double coat that you see. It's very recognizable. If that coat has a sort of a harsh wavy and it's very oily texture to it, helps the Chesapeake Bay Retriever work in the water for as long as they need to. Which is great because they actually love swimming, anything in the water. Here's the pointer. This is Chice. She is five years old from Falls Church, Virginia. Being shown by Graham Miller. Chice has also earned her junior hunting title. We mentioned it with the Weimariner earlier. Same thing here with Chice. Now they're working in the field. These dogs are very social, and they actually get along very well with other dogs and cats. They really like to be treated as members of the family. They need a lot of consistent and positive training. This is the wire-haired pointing griffon. This is Cloud Runner. He is three years old from Ridesville, North Carolina. Wire hair pointing Griffons have a, that's very distinctive coat. You see those, that bushy beard and eyebrows. Very coarse texture. Serves as protection when they're out hunting in the field. And they were bred to be such a tough, versatile sporting dog. Very highly intelligent, and they just want to please. They love running, jogging, swimming, but very well-behaved house dogs, as long as you do exercise them frequently. This is the Irish Water Spaniel, Arlo from Richmond, Virginia, with his breeder and handler, Shona Ensign. And the Irish Water Spaniel, they were developed from two strains of working water retrievers. The South Country Water Spaniel and the North Country Water Spaniel. And that comes from as way back as the 1100s. Irish Water Spaniels have that distinctive curly coat that you see here on Arlo, that rat tail. And that coat really does well in the water. A dual purpose hunting dog, if you will. Here's the Vishla. The Vishla is Naomi. She's three and a half years old. Being shown by Michelle Porfido Delusha. <laughs> Naomi was best of breed at this year's Westminster Kennel Club just a couple months ago. She also competes actively in agility, rally, and field work. And will be running for her master hunter next fall. Very accomplished in lots of different AKC sport. She's also registered as a therapy dog and makes regular visits to the hospital. These dogs are very sweet and gentle by nature as well, but very high energy level. This is the German short-haired pointer. 
another one of our popular breeds. They actually moved up a spot this year on the, the most popular breeds list. This is Tori. She is three years old from St. Louis with her breeder, owner, and handler, Lucretia Conrad. These folks are really versatile hunting dogs, and they do very well with retrieving on land and, and water as well, also trailing and pointing, of course. Really an all-purpose hunting dog, and they have that mental and physical energy all that needs to be channeled. really going to need to exercise these dogs and of course it can be done in many ways they like swimming jogging retrieving games this is the labrador retriever poker from mount airy maryland poker's almost two years old being shown by rusty howard labrador of course the most popular breed in the united states and that list just came out, Bill. We, it we did. just saw that. We just, we just reported on that. So if anybody missed that, head on over to akc.tv. Of course, you can download any of our channels. We're on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. You can find any of our content and coverage on there. If you ever miss anything, want to catch up, or you want to find out about those top breeds in the country. This is the flat-coated retriever that our judge is going over right now in the sporting group. This is Kate. Kate is four years old. She's from Morristown, New Jersey, and she's being shown by Angela Lloyd. And these flat-coated retrievers really do have that same kind of foundation stock as the Labrador retrievers. Of course, a little bit different. Very great family companion. Very versatile athletic breed. <laughs> and this is the Brittany. This is Bravo. He is three and a half years old from Burlington, North Carolina. Being shown by Gina Courier. Bravo's dad has actually been the number one Britney in the country for the last few years. And these dogs first came over to America in the 1940s very quickly became popular with hunters. Now the breed wasn't registered with the AKC as a Britney Spaniel until 1982. This is the English Springer Spaniel that our judge is going over right now. This is Teddy. He's three years old from Sherman, Connecticut, being shown by Howard Huber. Very friendly dogs, very energetic, actually not hyperactive. They do, of course, require that daily exercise. breed recognized in Britain in the early 1900s and then made its way over to North America a little bit, maybe 
like 10 years later. And here is the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. This is Sierra. Sierra is just a year and a half old from Pittsburgh, North Carolina. These dogs are very affectionate, very outgoing. Originated from a variety of setters, retrievers, spaniels, and collies, all brought to Nova Scotia by those early settlers. And they did have a different name originally. They were the Little River Duck Dog. Now, the first shoes is decoys to lure the waterfowl. And that playful behavior and the fluttering tails would really get the curiosity of ducks. And this is the German wire-haired pointer, Thaler. Thaler is two and a half years old from Annapolis, Maryland. She is being shown this afternoon by Carissa Champano. These dogs were very selectively bred for that ruggedness and that versatility of a hunting dog. Very highly popular sporting dog in Germany for years before they were officially even recognized as a breed. And in addition to hunting, these dogs also were trained as drug detection dogs, therapy dogs, canine actors even. Here's the Welsh Springer Spaniel. One of the oldest types of land spaniels that were developed back in the Renaissance. This is Valor. He is three years old from Kittrell, North Carolina. With his breeder, owner, and handler, Donna Wesseman. Now the Welsh Springers are generally calmer than a lot of the other Spaniel breeds, but they are built for some hard work and endurance, and they do need that daily exercise because they do have a high activity level. If you're just joining us on AKC TV, I'm Bill Ellis. I'm here with Marissa Sarbach. We're working our way through the sporting group right now. It's our second group of the day. We started off with the herding group, where we saw the Australian Shepherd win. And this is the Logoto Romagnolo that our judge is going over right now. This is Tito from Eunice, Louisiana. He's four years old with his handler, Don Powell. These dogs have such determination, a really great sense of smell, and that waterproof coat. They do really well with a lot of their outdoor work. Developed to hunt truffles back in Italy. This is the Field Spaniel. This is King Ralph, a youngster just nine months old, being shown by Lenny Brown. Now this breed came from a combination of Black Hawk Spaniels and Sussex Spaniel strains. It really came out as a distinct breed of its own in the second half of the 19th century. do have a high activity level, really bred for that energy and endurance. 
finding, flushing, and retrieving game from both land and water. Our judge is going to go over the English Cocker Spaniel right now on the table. This is Salem. Salem is two years old, excuse me, three years old from Crozet, Virginia. Being shown by her career in handler, Kristen Lyons. And the Cocker Spaniels are the smallest of the variety of sporting Spaniels. They've really always grown in popularity, both here and over in England. Of course, in England, they're just known as the Cocker, Cocker Spaniel. Spaniel. <laughs> and then they would have American Cocker <laughs> Spaniels. Here we have the English Cocker Spaniel and the Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Salem was here was born on Halloween. That's how she got her name. <laughs> and these dogs are very wonderful house dogs, very adaptable, cheerful, very sweet and affectionate. And this is our first of three Cocker Spaniel varieties. This is the black Cocker Spaniel. There are three varieties of Cocker Spaniel. They're all the same breed, but they're shown in three different varieties based on their color. So exactly the same standard, just variations of their color. This is the black Cocker Spaniel, like I mentioned. This is Flora. She is two years old, being shown by Linda Pitts from Knoxville, Tennessee. And of course, has shown many the top winning Cocker Spaniels. She had one of the top dogs in the country last year, Grant, of course, who she also bred. We'll have to see if Flora can follow in Grant's footsteps today. The Spaniels were developed back in the 1300s, all for different types of hunting. They're very merry, sociable, affectionate dogs, and they crave human companionship. Very intelligent, willing to please, very trainable. Now we have the Ascob Cocker Spaniel. Ascob stands for any solid color other than black. This is Charlie. Charlie's from Noblesville, Indiana, being shown by Lisa Arnett. The number one Ascob Cocker Spaniel in the country right now. And Bill, I do want to talk about the grooming on these dogs because you will see a little bit of a different cut in the ring versus those Spaniels on the street, right? Yeah, of course. So these Cocker Spaniels that we're seeing here definitely take some grooming for the show ring, a lot of bathing and brushing and blow drying, but of course not necessary at home when they're not in the show ring. They can go to the groomer, get flipped down so their hair is a little bit shorter. A little bit easier to maintain. Here's our third Cocker Spaniel of the sporting group, in the sporting group. This is the party color Cocker Spaniel. Party colors are white with any combination of the solid colors. And they also come in a roan color. And of course, if you have missed any of the content so far, or if you want to see any of our content from AKC TV, head on over to akc.tv. Download us on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Roku, we also have a mobile app that just launched, and we are very excited about that. So go check us out right on your phone. You can watch on social media as well. We are everywhere. We are <laughs> everywhere, and make sure that if you do download that mobile app, or when you download that mobile That's app, a better one. we want everybody to do that. It's a great way to enjoy all this content. Sign up for those notifications so you can be notified anytime we are live on AKC TV. I have it on my phone. You should, too. It's a great way to stay up to date with everything AKC TV. This is the Clumber Spaniel in the sporting group right now. This is Angus from Bloomington, Indiana, being shown by Aaron Myers. 
Angus competed at the Clumber Spaniel National Specialty earlier this week. It was nearby, and he was the winner there. So he's having a, a great start to the week. Those were one of the first specialized spaniel breeds. It was developed back in the 18th century in France, really to hunt in heavy cover. One of the first breeds recognized by the American Kennel Club. And you can see why they've always really been a favorite of aristocratic sporting hunters as well. And our final dog in the sporting group is the Sussex Spaniel. Sussex Spaniels are described as being long, low, and level. Longer body, a little low to the ground, and a very level top line. You saw the handler there just pick up the, hold up the ears, and that's just so that our judge can get a really good look at the shoulders and neck on this dog, since he does have that Beautiful long hair on his ears. Another one of the first breeds recognized by the American Kennel Club. Always come in this rich golden liver color. They were developed to hunt in thick hedgerows and underbrush, so they have this build that allows them to hunt in those conditions. Very steady and determined breed. That is it for the sporting group. So our judge, James No, is going to walk down the line and have another look at this beautiful group of sporting dogs. And if you're just joining us, this is the second group of the day. We are live here in Raleigh, North Carolina, covering the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show. I'm Marissa Sarbach here with Bill Ellis. We're from AKC TV. Judge really taking a minute to look around the ring and get a good look at these dogs again. like he's going to pull out some dogs here, starting with the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. The German short-haired pointer is coming out. The Brittany and the English Springer Spaniel. English Cocker Spaniel, the Black Cocker Spaniel, the Clumber Spaniel, and the Sussex Spaniel. Beautiful group of sporting dogs. And it is just so important to note, right, Bill, that these dogs are not being judged against each of the other dogs in the ring. They're being judged against that written breed standard for their breed. That's right. Each breed has a written breed standard, describes the ideal specimen for that breed. That's how our judge will make his choices. He will determine which dog best fits that rich breed standard. Looks like he wants to see these dogs go around one more time. Yep, each dog's going to go around one more time, give our judge James Noah a chance to have another look while he decides who the winner will be here in the sporting group.
pulling up the German short haired pointer first. Followed by the Black Cocker Spaniel. The Plumber Spaniel. And the English Cocker Spaniel there for fourth, and that's it. So the winner is the German short haired pointer. We're going to be right back in just a few minutes with the working group here on AKC TV. My favorite part about being a breeder is putting that puppy into a person's hands. The relationship between the owner and the breeder is really important. It's something that's ongoing for the life of the dog. Some of them live in my home. Some of them I don't ever want to let go running around and playing with dogs all week long, it's nothing better. The most important thing that you're gonna want is a healthy dog. When we sell a puppy to a new family, they become part of our family. We're there to help them for the life of the dog. Dogs can't brush. With fresh breath by Tropiclean, they don't have to. Clean teeth, healthy mouth, fresh breath. No brushing required. You make the moments, we make them fresh. We are AKC TV, the digital network for all things dogs. AKC TV, powered by the American Kennel Club, brings 130 years of dog expertise to dog lovers the world over. From a front row seat at world-class dog events, to training and health tips for you and your pup, to programming created especially for you and your best friend. Find us online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. AKC TV, sit, stay, watch. Roxy sure is having fun. Party's over, six legs. She's got Simperica now. Simpera what? Simperica is what kills ticks and fleas like us. Kills? Kills! Studies show at the end of the month, it kills more ticks in less time than Frontline Plus and NextGuard. Guess we should mosey on. See you never, Roxy. Use Simperica with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. The most common side effects are vomiting, diarrhea, and lethargy. Say goodbye to ticks and fleas with monthly Simperica chewables. We all want more time, quality time to spend on what matters most to us. At the Canine Health Foundation, we're committed to helping dogs live longer, healthier lives. That means more playtime, more walk time, and more love time. Visit us to learn more. AKC TV, the digital network for all things dogs, brings you AKC Live, featuring canine events from around the country. All the action in your own home. Sit ringside at your favorite dog show. Get a front row seat at Agility and Obedience Trials on AKC Live. Only on AKC TV, powered by the American Kennel Club. Find us anytime, anywhere, online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. AKC Live. Only on AKC TV. Home. Home is where family comes together. Home is where you go to relax. Home is where you feel secure. With the AKC line of premium pet products, you can rest assured that your pet feels safe and secure in their home too. AKC, because every home deserves a good dog and every dog deserves a good home. AKC Secure Pet Living Products, available at the Home Depot. Welcome back to AKC TV. We are live from the Raleigh Kennel Club here in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm Marissa Sarbach. Sitting with me is Bill Ellis, and we are from AKC TV. We are getting started now with our third group of the day. Just getting started, this is the working group. So far, we've seen the sporting group and the herding group today as well. Our judge today, Mr. Dana Klein. Working breeds are some of the world's oldest breeds. They were bred for a variety of roles, such as police dog, sled dog, guard dog, search and rescue dog. This is the Great Dane that we're getting started with in the working group. This is Gigi. She is three years old from Tampa, Florida, being shown by Janice Granda. Gigi holds the title of fastest Great Dane in Fast Cat on record at 32.37 miles an hour. Wow. Fast Cat is a sport open to all dogs. It's Equivalent to the 100-yard dash. Thank you. And here is the Akita, native to Japan. This is Tycoon, 
He is at five years old here from Canada. Being shown by Emily Burden. And these dogs are a really versatile guardian and hunting dog. Uh, at one point, ownership of these dogs was restri restricted to the Japanese imperial family. And of course, just that ruling aristocracy. That's one of seven Japanese breeds designated as a natural monument in the native land. Here's the Rottweiler, Rolando. He's three years old from Handia, New Hampshire. Being shown by Zach Helmer. And this breed has been pretty popular consistently throughout the 1900s and onward. Now today, these dogs are really used as companions, but they do also work as some police dogs, service dogs, therapy dogs, and they have some pretty strong competitors in a lot of our dog sports. This is the Black Russian Terrier. Next up in the working group, this is Ollie. He is three years old from Moorhead, North Carolina. Black Russian Terriers were developed after World War II in Russia as an all-purpose, very hardy, trainable military and police dog developed to withstand the Russian climate. These dogs were originally bred for that intelligence, trainability, a very alert and confident dog. I really do love their families. They're devoted to them. Very fearless and great watchdogs. You do have to really watch them and guide them because without it, a trait of that really strong guardian instinct, instinct that can really result in an overly protective dog. So you just have to keep a close eye on that. Next up is the Doberman Pinscher. Developed in Germany, named after their developer, Louis Doberman. This is Lena. She's three years old from Harrisburg, North Carolina. Being shown by Diego Garcia. These dogs are very loyal, very trustworthy, and very protective of their people. They really need to feel like they're part of the family. <laughs> they're quite sensitive and very intolerant of that rough handling, so you have to be very good with them. Next up is the Siberian Husky. Siberian Huskies are the smallest, fastest sled dog. Bred to run long distances. This is Silver. He's five years old, here all the way from Tokyo, Japan. Being shown by Tim Torella. It's so exciting to see dogs come from different parts of the world to show in these dog shows. I know we expected that in the AKC National Championship, but at these other dog shows, it's so exciting to see. We keep seeing it. Mm -hmm. Here's the Great Pyrenees. This is Ava. Ava is two years old from Wakefield, Rhode Island. Being shown by Lisa Connor. This is a very ancient breed, a livestock guardian. And it's believed to have originated in Central Asia or Siberia. For a long time, it was used to protect flocks in the Pyrenees Mountains. Where they got their name. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the Bull Mastiff, Sam, from Bristol, Virginia. Being shown this afternoon by Jerry Cole. They tell us that Sam is an energetic clown who loves to jump in the ring, but we'll have to see if he does that. He usually jumps when he comes back to the judge after he goes down and back. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. They know their dog well. Bull Mastiffs are a cross between Mastiffs and Bulldogs. One of the gamekeeper, Gamekeeper's Night Dog. Yeah, this breed was recognized in Britain back in 1924, and about 10 years later here in the United States. Here's the Newfoundland, Joseph. Joseph is four years old from Alpharetta, Georgia. Being shown by Bradley Butner. The ancestors for this breed developed from a combination of working and hunting dogs that were brought to Newfoundland by European sailors. These dogs really selected for hardiness, swimming ability, versatility. Truly an all-purpose working dog. This is the boxer. This is Trix. Trix is three years old. She is from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Being shown by Daniel Sanchez. Boxers were developed in Germany in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Very successful cattle dogs, butcher's dogs. I thought to get that name from the playful way they use their front feet. Often called the middleweight athlete of dogdom. And I have to say, over at Meet the Breeds this year, the boxers had a very cute booth. They had a kissing booth set up for the boxers. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. It was very cute. Lots of visitors at mm -hmm. that booth. Here's the Anatolian Shepherd, Laddie. She's just 14 months old from Norton, Massachusetts. She's shown by her owner, Reagan Leston. This breed originated in Turkey about 6,000 years ago. Originally used by nomadic herders to move and protect livestock really did well in the very harsh climate. And this is the Bernese Mountain Dog. One of the Swiss breed. Developed as an all-purpose farm dog, draft dog, and watchdog. This is Damon. He is four years old from Gloucester, Virginia. He's being shown this afternoon by Casey Von Engel. These terms are extremely gentle, intelligent, very self-confident, and very responsive. That's what really makes them good at what they do, and they're candidates for really advanced training. Damon was best to breed the last two years at the AKC National Championship. This is the St. Bernard that our Judge Dana Klein is going over right now. This is Sky. He is, she is two years old from Stewart's Draft, Virginia. He's being shown by her handler, Jeff Freese. And for a long time, these dogs were known as heroic and life-saving dogs of the Swiss Alps. They were used as rescue dogs, trap dogs, guard dogs, even by the monks. 
They were known for rescuing travelers that were trapped in avalanches and snowdrifts. They crossed a very treacherous Great St. Bernard Pass. It's over in the Western Alps. This is the Cane Corso. This is Twister. She is two years old from Port Jervis, New York. Being shown by Carissa Champagno. Twister's father is the top winning Cane Corso of all time. And her grandmother is the first Cane Corso to win a Best in Show. So oh. quite the family history. You can see how athletic and muscular Cane Corso are. They really are, but they are really so sensitive. So you have to be careful when training them not to be too harsh with them. But a great idea to get started with that training early. And make sure they're socialized and they turn into very tolerant, well-mannered adults. Here's the Alaskan Malamute, one of the world's oldest breeds. One of the first breeds developed in North America. Malamutes were bred to pull heavier load. You can really see the difference here between the Alaskan Malamute and the Siberian Husky that we saw earlier, which of course were bred to go those longer distances. Alaskan Malamute, bigger, stronger, bred to pull heavier load. This is Midas. He is three years old, being shown by Aaron Myers. Another dog who was best of breed earlier this year at the Westminster Kennel Club. Well, originally bred as sled dogs to Malamutes today, they really need a job to do. A lot of activities are gonna fit the bill, hiking, backpacking, swimming, of course our organized dog sports. So maybe I'll see if maybe I drop her in two. But you really need an outlet for that mental and physical energy. This is the boar bull going down and back right now. This is Burl. Burl is four years old from Blue Ridge, Georgia, being shown by Bryn Taylor. <laughs> These dogs are trained well, socialized well. They are very calm, self-assured, very reliable dogs. And they bond really, really well with their families. Here's the Portuguese water dog. Next up in the working group. This is Portia. She is three years old. Here from Canada. Being shown in the group this afternoon by Sarah Muth. Well, I want to talk about the curly or wavy coats that you're going to see on this type of dog and a few others that do really well in the water. Yep, so Portuguese water dogs come in two different coat varieties, curly and wavy. They're water-resistant coats, so it allows them to work in the water. Portuguese water dogs, of course, developed in Portugal to help the fishermen pull in their nets. Here is the Kubas. This is an so ancient breed developed back in Tibet. And that name is actually a Turkish word that means armed guard of nobility. Very recognizable. They always come in this color, this white color. Developed in Tibet, but uh, came here in this modern day version from Hungary. This is Yur. He's two years old with his handler Cheryl Cannon. Next up, another one of those Swiss breeds that I mentioned when we were looking at the Bernese Mountain Dog. This is the Greater Swiss Mountain Dog. Rumble, 
Rumble is two years old from Aiken, South, Car South Carolina. Being shown by his owner, Melissa Jeriel. Today is Rumble's second birthday. Oh, happy birthday. A great place to be spending it. Always a good day at the dog mm -hmm. show. If you're just joining us, we are at the Raleigh Kennel Club here in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm Marissa Sarbach here with Bill Ellis. We are from AKC TV. Thanks for watching us live. This is the Dog de Bordeaux in the working group right now. This is Donk. He is four years old from Troy, North Carolina. Being shown by his owner, Leanne Kimball. This dog is also known as the French Mastiff. This breed is believed to have been in existence for over 600 years. Too much is known about exactly where they came from, but it's thought they might have come from ancient Rome. Next up in the working group is the Samoyed. This is Busy. Busy is just 15 months old from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Being shown by her owner and handler, Trish Mitchell. Samoyeds are a Nordic breed. Used for centuries for herding, hunting, guarding, and hauling. Next up, here we get a look at the Leonberger. This is Bassie. She is 17 months old. Being shown by her breeder, owner, and handler, Susan Townsend. Very confident, self-assured breed with quite the protective instincts. They love spending time with their people. They really need that daily training and socialization when they're pretty young. And our final dog in the working group is the standard schnauzer. This is Frodo. Frodo is six years old. He's from Warrington, Virginia, being shown by Whitney Meeks. Of the three different Schnauzers, Giant, Standard, and Miniature, the Standard is believed to be the prototype. Now this breed was traditionally a ratter, a watchdog, really an all-purpose farm dog. And during World War I, those standard schnauzers were used as messenger dogs and then later police work. So that's it for the working group. Our judge, Dana Klein, just walking down the line, having another, another look at these beautiful working dogs. This was a judge we were very lucky enough to have on the show on AKC TV. We interviewed him back in December at the AKC National Championship. We had on Ask the Expert. We had questions asked. Pulling out the Great Dane and the Akita, the Black Russian Terrier, the Siberian Husky and the Great Pyrenees are coming out, as well as the Boxer, the Connie Corso, and the Samoyed. Beautiful group of working dogs. Like he's going to send them around one at a time. And Bill, what does this give our judge a chance to do? It gives our judge here a chance to look at all of these dogs one more time, remember what he saw and felt when he went over each of them and saw them move individually so he can sort through them here and decide who the winner is going to be.
if you're just joining us now, we are currently in the working group. So far today, we've seen the sporting group, and first we saw the herding group. We are watching the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show right now. Very excited to be here in North Carolina. If you've missed our previous two groups, you can check anything out on akc.tv. Yep, we make all of our content available on demand. You can find us on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, as well as our new mobile apps. Our judge is pulling out the Black Russian Terrier first, followed by the Siberian Husky the Great Pyrenees, and the Cane Corso. Let's see if that's it. Yep, the Black Russian Terrier is the winner of the working group, followed by the Siberian Husky, the Great Pyrenees, and the Cane Corso. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back on AKC TV. We are AKC TV, the digital network for all things dogs, AKC TV, powered by the American Kennel Club, brings 130 years of dog expertise to dog lovers the world over. From a front row seat at world class dog events, to training and health tips for you and your pup, to programming created especially for you and your best friend. Find us online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. AKC TV, sit, stay, watch. Over 2,800 dogs compete but only one can be named Westminster Best in Show Champion. He's best in show. Congratulations, King. Thanks for making Purina Pro Plan your nutrition of choice. There are certain breeds that are gonna be great apartment dogs if you live in New York City. There's gonna be other breeds that are fabulous working dogs for you if you're out on a ranch. He is my best friend. AKC.org is the best place to start because they have all the information about any breed you can think of. What's not to love about this place? <laughs> Over 2,800 dogs compete, but only one can be named Westminster Best in Show Champion. He's best in show. Congratulations, King. Thanks for making Purina Pro Plan your nutrition of choice. Home. Home is where family comes together. Home is where you go to relax. Home is where you feel secure. With the AKC line of premium pet products, you can rest assured that your pet feels safe and secure in their home too. AKC, because every home deserves a good dog and every dog deserves a good home. AKC Secure Pet Living Products, available at The Home Depot. Welcome back to AKC TV live from Raleigh, North Carolina. We are here at the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show. I'm Marissa Sarbach here with Bill Ellis. You are watching us live. We are currently in the non-sporting group so far today. We've seen the working group, the sporting group, and the herding group go. And don't worry if you missed anything, it'll be up on akc.tv for you. So we're just getting started with the non-sporting group. Our first dog is up, the standard poodle. Our judge for the non-sporting group is David Kirkland from Sanford, North Carolina. The beautiful standard poodle on your screen right now is Steeler. He's two and a half years old from Toronto, Canada, being shown by, shown by Sarah Perchik. Steeler has already had a very international career. He is an English, Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, Italian, and American champion. Wow. That's quite the list. It is. <laughs> with big wins at the World Dog Show in Crux in England. Here is the Dalmatian. The Dalmatian is Tamelia. Like the flower. She's a three years old from Clemson, South Carolina, being shown by Janice Granda. Who's 
dog's early origins are a little bit uncertain, but I thought that they may have originated around the Dalmatian coast of Croatia. Of course, the Dalmatian became popular as a carriage dog in the 1800s. They were also used for hunting and military work. on the screen right now that our judge is going over. This is Gibson. Gibson is three years old from Lake City, South Carolina with handler, breeder, and owner Beth Blakenship. Now the Kazan does share some heritage with other European Spitz breeds such as the Pomeranian and the Finnish Spitz. This breed did evolve in Holland. Originally used to patrol barges, river boats, and farms. Hazens have a very distinctive black marking on their face that gives them the look of spectacles. Sometimes we call them the smiling Dutchman. Here is the American Eskimo dog. Stetson, he is three years old from Clinton Township, Michigan. Being shown by Susan Kaltrider. A very beautiful coat on this dog, but it really needs to be brushed daily to avoid any kind of issues there. You really need to take care of it, especially during heavy shedding season, and that's in spring and fall. Very energetic breed, eager to please, and very versatile. You have to be aware of how many black pairs of pants you are on <laughs> for a breed like an American Eskimo dog. That's a good tip there, Bill. <laughs> Here's our second poodle of the day. Here's the miniature poodle. Poodles are shown in three size varieties. It's the same standard for all three. They're just shown in those three different size varieties, the standard, the miniature, and the toy. The standard that we saw earlier and the miniature that we're seeing now are both shown here in the non-sporting group. Hopefully we'll see the toy poodle later in the toy group. This is Delta. We just saw Delta down in Palm Beach, Florida. We saw him go best in show there on AKC TV. We'll have to see how he does here this weekend and today. See if he can repeat. Well, we had a great opportunity for you to get out in the ring and grab an interview with Delta and the handler afterwards. Delta is two years old. He's from Stewart, Florida, being shown by his owner and handler, Nicole Munecki. That's a really great option for a dog if you do have any allergy problems because of that lack of shedding. Here's the Shiba Inu on the table right now. This is Benji. He is five years old. Here from Canada with his handler, Emily Burden. Another one of those native Japanese breeds. Yeah, actually the smallest and oldest of those native breeds. But I have to say, I feel like they've become quite popular here in the US lately, especially over in New York City. I feel like we see them all the time. I feel like we see them in New York City a lot. Mm -hmm. Sort of the perfect size for a city dog, they right? Are. face, of course, belongs to the Chinese Sharpe. This is Ruby. 
Ruby is just 20 months old. She's from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Chinese Sharp Hays have a lot of distinctive characteristics. They have a coat texture that's very similar to sandpaper. They have, of course, those wrinkles that we all know and love. That definitely need to be kept clean. <laughs> and they have a blue-black tongue. Their tongue has to be a blue-black color. One of only two breeds, Chinese Sharp Hays and Chow Chows. And the history on them is a little bit hazy, but they were first documented by the Hong Kong Kennel Club in 1968. And just two years after that, the first Sharpay was imported to here in America. Bam, bam, bam. Here's the Tibet Terrier. Evie from Aiken, South Carolina. She's six years old, being shown by Lenny Brown. Ma'am. Ma'am. Please go back. Thank you. you this is such an ancient breed raised by Tibetan monks for centuries. <laughs> Very intelligent, loyal, devoted, affectionate. They make wonderful companion dogs. You saw our judge, of course, put his hands on Evie here, like he'll do with all the dogs. You saw him pay particular attention to her feet. Fat and Terriers have to have very full feet, sometimes described as snowshoes. Here's the Lhasa Apto. Another breed perfect for anyone out there looking for some serious brushing. <laughs> this is Latte. He's three years old. Being shown by his handler, Susan Giles. The number one Lhasa Opto in the country. And don't be misled by those glamorous looks. This is a really strong-willed dog in a very small package. Great watchdogs, very intelligent and resourceful. Very loyal. It was once a tradition for the Dalai Lama to send Lhasa Apsos as gifts to each emperor of China to show just how valued that breed was. And this is the Lao Chin on the table right now, also known as the Little Lion Dog. They have that distinctive lion flip that they're shown in. This is Jensen. He is two years old from right here in Raleigh. Being shown by his breeder, owner, and handler, Lexi Neal. Jensen was also best to breed at the AKC National Championship in Orlando back in December. I'm sure we'll see a lot of these dogs back in Orlando in December when we're there again for the national championship. Which will, again, be a very nice break from those winters in New York, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the Lauchen here, very alert, lively, affectionate, very outgoing and sweet. Next up is the Bichon Frise. Sean Frise's originated in the Mediterranean. First gained their popularity in the 14th century as a prize pet of Italian nobility, which spread to France. This is Eli. He's five years old. Being shown by Kathy Vogel. This breed was recognized by the APC 
1970s, and they've been consistently popular as both pets and as show dogs. They also do very well in dog sports as well as therapy work. Next up in the non-sporting group is the skipper key. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Skipper keys developed in Belgium and they were used to hunt small animals. This is Joseph. He is three years old. Also from right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Being shown by his handler, Julia Thicklin Sadler. Just starting his show career. a very faithful and devoted breed. They really love their owners. They can be a little bit reserved with strangers, so that is something to keep in mind. They need that socialization. They have a very well-developed hunting instinct. Here is the Boston Terrier. Another all-American breed. This is Maverick. He is four years old from West Palm Beach, Florida. Being shown by Angela Cipriati. Very dapper, very charming. And I love it because I've learned the nickname American Gentleman. Breed always has these typical markings, gives them that sort of black tie look. These are actually really vigilant watchdogs, wonderful therapy dogs, and they do well at many dog sports too. Here's the Tibetan Spaniel. This is Cora, she's four years old from Ringo's, New Jersey. Being shown by Diego Garcia. The number one Tibetan Spaniel back in 2018. And another best of breed winner from the Westminster Kennel Club. And I do love this. The parent club describes them as 50% terrier, 50% monkey, and 50% cat. <laughs> <laughs> they had a, a good time coming up with that description. Oh, yes. <laughs> Here's the French Bulldog on the table, a very popular breed. They were once again in the top five most popular breeds for 2018. This is Valentino. He is three years old from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Being shown by Linda Pitt in the group tonight. As Bill said, a very popular breed over here in the United States. And we actually have a very adorable French Bulldog puppy as part of the AKC Puppy Pack. And that is Puppy Marzipan. So check her out on AKC's Instagram account. You can follow along with that hashtag AKC Puppy Pack to see all of what the Puppy Pack is doing. You like Frenchies. Here is the Bulldog. Next up in the non-sporting group, this is Dixie. Dixie is 15 months old from right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Being shown by her breeder, owner, and handler, Brandon Edge. Finished her grand championship today. We are just getting ready to release our Meet the Breeds documentary all about Bulldogs. 
super excited about that. Comes out on Monday. We'll premiere it at noon on AKC TV. And it'll, of course, be available anytime you want to watch it. So make sure to visit our website to enjoy that on Monday at noon. And all our great content. Or get on over to Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV. Or you can download our mobile app available on iOS and Google Play. Check it out in the App Store. And our final dog in the non-sporting group is the Autan de Tulliar. This is a London. He is two years old from Montville, New Jersey. Being shown by Ernesto Lara. And this breed is a native of Madagascar. A bit of a mystery surrounding that exact origin. Very popular with the French who colonized the island. Always have this. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much to say. <laughs> Always have this profuse coat that's very soft, almost like the texture of cotton. And that is it for the non sporting group here at the Raleigh Kennel Club. Our judge, David Kirkland, now gets to pick a winner. Looks like he's going to start by making a short list, pulling out the standard poodle and the Dalmatian. The miniature poodle. The Lhasa Apto and the Bichon Frise are going to come out, as well as the Tibetan Spaniel there on your screen. The French Bulldog. Now we could see our judge make a decision right now. We could see him feel each dog again. We could see him have them go around the ring. Oh, looks like they'll go around the ring again. Yep, the standard poodle is going to go around the ring. There goes the Dalmatian. Followed by the miniature poodle. There goes the Lhasa Apso. Sean Frise went around. There was the Tibetan Spaniel and the French Bulldog. <laughs> Looks like the standard poodle is going to be the winner of the non-sporting group. Pulled out first, followed by the miniature poodle. The Dalmatian. And the Bichon Frise. And that is it. So the standard pool is the winner of the non-sporting group. We're going to take a very short break, and we're going to be back with the Hound group in just a moment. AKC TV, the digital network for all things dogs, brings you AKC Live, featuring canine events from around the country. All the action in your own home. Sit ringside at your favorite dog show. Get a front row seat at Agility and Obedience Trials on AKC Live. Only on AKC TV, powered by the American Kennel Club. Find us anytime, anywhere, online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. AKC Live. Only on AKC TV. My favorite part about being a breeder is putting that puppy into a person's hands. The relationship between the owner and the breeder is really important. It's something that's ongoing for the life of the dog. Some of them live in my home. Some of them I don't ever want to let go. Running around and playing with dogs all week long, it's nothing better. The most important thing that you're going to want is a healthy dog. When we sell a puppy to a new family, they become part of our family. We're there to help them for the life of the dog. Dogs? can't brush. With fresh breath by Tropiclean, they don't have to. Clean teeth, healthy mouth, fresh breath. No brushing required. 
You make the moments. We make them fresh. Is your pet trying to tell you something? The Pet Comfort Feeding System by WeatherTech. 100% non-toxic and lead-free. Made from U.S. stainless steel and certified by the NSF. Designed to trap spills and messes. Trust the way you feed your pet. Choose the perfect size and color at PetComfort.com. Welcome back to AKC TV. We are live here in Raleigh, North Carolina, covering the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show. I'm Marissa Sawback here with Bill Ellis. We are your hosts from AKC TV. Right now we're in the Hound Group, and it looks like we are just about to get started with that first dog. Just as a recap today, so far, first we saw the Herding Group, won by the Australian Shepherd. Then we saw the Sporting Group, won by the German Short-Haired Pointer. The Working Group, won by the Black Russian Terrier. And the Non-Sporting Group, won by the Standard Poodle. Right now we are in the Hound Group. And our first dog in the Hound Group is the Afghan Hound. This is Bella. She's three years old. From Blairsville, Georgia, with her handler, Lenny Brown. Our judge this afternoon for the Hound Group is Michael Canalizo from Mill Neck, New York. Next up, we have the Rhodesian Ridgeback. Very muscular and athletic breed, of course, with that characteristic ridge of hair that runs the opposite direction on their back. These dogs are so huge, and they were used to hunt Africa's big game. They got that name, also known as the African Lion Dog. This is Manny. He's four years old. With his breeder owner and handler, Susan Pisari. Next up is the Pharaoh Hound. Ancient breed. This is Paris. She's three years old from Wadsworth, Ohio, being shown by Graham Miller. The Pharaoh Hound National Specialty winner for 2018. Here's the Saluki. Another ancient sight hound. Bred for speed, like so many of these sight hounds are. Hounds really exist in two categories sight hounds and scent hounds. Sight hounds, of course, use their eyes to hunt, and hounds use their noses. Here's the Irish Wolfhound, one of the tallest breeds. Ma'am, you hold right there. They have always been prized since those ancient times, and for centuries, that ownership of these dogs was even restricted to nobility. They sent as gifts to the royal kennels in India, Persia, Russia, Eastern Europe. This is Kenzie. She's three years old. Being shown by Whitney Meeks tonight in the Hound Group. Best of breed winner for the last two years at the Westminster Kennel Club. Here is the Scottish deer hound, Duncan. Duncan here is just 11 months old from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Being shown by his owner, Sandy Eubank. Well, this is an ancient breed of Scotland. Considered a close relative of that Irish wolfhound we just saw. And for a long time, because of social, economic, and environmental changes, the breed almost became extinct for a long time in the 19th century. Next up is the Ibethan Hound, Church. Church is two years old from Durham, North Carolina, with his handler, Jacqueline Smith. Mm -hmm. 
And I know I mentioned it before, but we have another Abethan Hound in the AKC Puppy Pack. Very cute. His name is Gideon, and you can follow him on Instagram. <laughs> Here's the Greyhound. The Greyhounds are possibly the oldest type of hunting dog. They've been documented by ancient civilizations for about 5,000 years. This is Lark. She's just a year old from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Being shown by her owner, Cynthia Swanson. Clark also competes in lure coursing and scent work. If you want to learn more about lure coursing, you should check out our coverage of the 2018 Lure Coursing National Championship on AKC TV. Next up is the Bloodhound. Very talented scent hounds. They have incredible noses. They use those wrinkles and long ears to help trap the scent. This is Luke. He is four years old, being shown by Kathy Caton Musto. These dogs really need to be focused and have that formal training because they need to be challenged. They're very gentle and easygoing dogs. Next up is Gigi, the American Foxhound from Washington, D.C., being shown by her breeder, owner, and handler, Lisa Miller. And what's interesting here, George Washington was often cited as the father of that breed bred at his Mount Vernon kennel in the late 1700s. Ma'am, 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 hold on, hold on, thank you. Next up is the Borzoi. This is Chica from Madison, Wisconsin. She's being shown by Aranda Glenn, okay. who we just saw win the working group with the Black Russian Terrier. These dogs were developed to hunt wolves and really big game. They've been owned by Russian nobility for centuries. Next up is the Blue Tick Hound. This is Big John. He's two years old from Cherryville, North Carolina. This is his breeder, owner, and handler, Casey Davis, with him. These dogs were originally bred to trail and tree raccoons, and they were developed here in America. Another best to breed winner from last year's AKC National Championship. And here's the black and tan coon hound, River. River is four years old, being shown by Michelle Queen. Black and tan coon hounds can trace that ancestry back to the scent hounds, even of medieval Europe. Those temperaments can range a bit, a bit from outgoing to aloof, but they are usually pretty easygoing. This is the Basenji. This is Bonnie. She's two years old from Newtown, Pennsylvania. Being shown by her owner, Jane Johnson. This breed originated the general purpose hunting dog in Central Africa. But those ancestors can tr be traced all the way back to ancient Egypt. This is the Petit Basset Griffon Vendéen. 
or PBGV for short. This is Nelson. He's three years old from Dawsonville, Dawsonville, Georgia, with his handler, Zach Helmer. My very first show dog was a PBGV. They're a super fun that. breed. Mm -hmm. Very extroverted, very clownish, sometimes very loud. You have to be ready for some, <laughs> some barking. Here's the first of two beagles on the table right now. Beagles are shown in two different size varieties, same standard, same breed. Just two different varieties based on size. So we have the big beagle as we call them. They're 13 to 15 inches tall. This is Miranda. She's 17 months old from South Boston, Virginia. Being shown by her breeder and owner, Marcelo Chagas. These dogs are really cheerful, really adaptable. And they do get along really well with other dogs. Typically very friendly as well with people. But hunting is always going to be the priority in their mind. <coughs> and that sense of smell is second only to that of a bloodhound. Next up is the Cherneco del Etna. A breed developed in Sicily. This is Ella. She's four and a half years old from Hagerstown, Maryland. She's being shown by her owner, Casey Combs. This breed is actually the only native breed of Sicily as well. They've been present on that island for over 2,500 years. And our second beagle in the hound group, the little beagle, this is Will. So the smaller beagle variety here, they're up to 13 inches. Will is 10 months old, being shown by his owner, Kelly Lockwood. Will is just starting his show career, just his second weekend being shown. These dogs are a very popular breed. They do well as therapy dogs, detection dogs. Here is the Portuguese Padango Pequeno. This is Jerry. Jerry's just nine months old. From Lexington, North Carolina, being shown by Junior McDaniel. And that part of their name, Padango, really roughly translates to rabbit hunter, warren hound. Very inquisitive, very intelligent dogs. And they're the national breed of Portugal. I did not know that. <laughs> Here's our first dachshund of the hound group. Three varieties of dachshunds. All the same standard, but they have three different coat varieties that they're shown in. So our first one here is the wire-haired dachshund. This is Winston, he's two and a half years old from Seagrove, North Carolina, being shown by Adam Peterson. Winston was best of variety at the Westminster Kennel Club earlier this year. I'm like a broken record, I keep saying <laughs> that. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> thing. Here is the smooth dachshund, Ajax from Chesterfield, Virginia. He is two and a half years old. Being shown by his breeder and his owner, Kevin Kirkelman. Well, these dachshunds originated in Germany and they were developed to hunt game all the way from badgers to wild boar. Really, hunters were seeking a versatile, sturdy, courageous dog with the skills of both hound and terrier. 
You have to be pretty courageous to want to go after the Badger. <laughs> and our third and final Dachshund is the long-haired Dachshund. This is Lion. He's almost three years old from New York City, New York. Being shown by Angela Lloyd, just beginning his show career. And those dachshunds all have that long body and those short legs, really recognizable silhouette. It for the hound group, our judge Michael Canalizo is going to pull some dogs out here and make a cut. He's pulled out the Afghan, the feral hound, and the Saluki so far. Here comes the American foxhound, the Borzoi, and the blue tick coon hound, as well as the Basenji, the big beagle, the Cherneco deletna, the Portuguese Pedango Pequeno, and the wire haired Dachshund. like he's going to have them go one at a time around the ring. So he has another chance to look at all of these beautiful hounds. Now our judge is not judging each of these dogs against the other dogs in the ring. Instead, he's looking at the dogs here and comparing them to that written breed standard for each breed. we are currently in the hound group. So far we've seen the non-sporting group, the working group, the sporting group, and the herding group already this afternoon. Looks like our judge Michael Canalizo is pulling the Afghan hound out first. Followed by the feral hound. The Basenji is coming out. As well as the Portuguese Pedango Pequeno. And that's it for the Hound Group. Afghan Hound is the winner. Now don't go anywhere because we have a great local story for you. Biggie the Pug is owned by Carolyn Cook of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Now Biggie has become a celebrity here in the Raleigh area, winning the Toy Group at Westminster in 2018 and the AKC National Championship last December. So let's meet Biggie, AKA putting on the Ritz. everything that you want in a pack. You know, he's a, like they say, a lot of dog in a small body. He's very showy. Uh, he have a, such a wonderful face, eyes, ears, uh, his top line, his movement. When Biggie moves, he say, I'm here, look at me. They're just a, a great team. I mean, it's all teamwork. And, and Stebbin has a way of, of, you know, when they come to live with him, he's part of their family. And their kids are, you know, his kids. And, and, and Stebbin's wife also, Jen, she's just wonderful with all the dogs. And she's a breeder herself of Shih Tzu, she and her mom. So he has a wonderful bond with every dog he's ever shown for me. And it's just, you know, they love him, he adores them, and it's, he's, they're his family. The, the dog need to trust you 100%. You know, if, if you blink your eye, the dog needs to know why. Or if the dog do that to you, you need to know why. So this is a trust that is not happening overnight. Any movement that I do, he knows that I'm not gonna 
uh, do anything extreme for he to be scared of or nothing like that. The trust between us is just we build it day by day. To me, he's the epitome of the, of the breed standard, and that's what you're supposed to judge on. And he's everything a pug should be, and, and more. He's got that show personality. He was, like, born to show. He has that it factor. In my mind, yes, I mean, he would be my winner <laughs> if I were there. We're very proud, I mean, to win both Westminster Group 1 and the AKC Championship Group 1, and also your national pug especially. I mean, he just had an incredible year. So we're so proud and very, very blessed. It's an honor for me uh, to have these babies from, uh, at, at this moment, from Carolyn, you know, uh, and say, Esteban, please show, show my dog. It's an honor for me. My only way to, to get them back all this is to them see their dog happy. You know, as long as the dog is happy, he will perform perfect. That is my goal, the dogs be very, very happy, and then the rest is gonna come. What would make Biggie happy? A piece of steak. <laughs> <laughs>
Another dog that's gonna be great for someone with allergy issues. Something less to worry about. As you can see, just a very small, fine-boned, elegant little dog. And here is the toy poodle. So we saw the standard and the miniature poodle in the non-sporting group. Now we get to see the third variety, the smallest variety of poodle. This is Cami, the toy poodle from Houston, Texas, being shown by Kaz Hosaka. Cammy is three years old. He's the number one toy poodle in the country right now. And poodles are considered one of the most intelligent breeds. They really learn quickly and are extremely easy to train. But they are quite sensitive and they have long memories. So you have to be careful about rough handling or any kind of harsh training methods that'll really have a negative lasting impact on the poodle. And today's poodle retains that retrieving and swimming ability of its water dog ancestors. Here's the Silky Terrier on the table right now. This is McLaren. She is three years old from Bradenton, Florida. from Bradenton, Florida, being shown by Jody Robert, who is also her breeder and owner. And the Silky Terriers are a fairly new breed, originally known as that Sydney Silky. Here's the Brussels Griffon on the table right now. This is Olive. She is four years old from Bremen, Ohio. Being shown by Susan Depew. Brussels Griffons were developed in Brussels, Belgium. And these are extremely devoted house dogs. They do require a lot of personal attention. They, they can be wary with strangers, although they are excellent watchdogs, but they can become a little bit introverted without that constant socialization. This is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel on the table right now. This is Kane. Kane is four and a half years old from Fredericksburg, Virginia. This is breeder, owner, and handler Helen Norton. Cavalier King Charles Spaniels are a very popular companion breed. They make great family pets. They also do very well at a lot of our dog sports, like agility and obedience. Also do wonderfully as therapy dogs. Very sweet, loving breed. And here's the Pomeranian on your screen right now. She moved after I came. This is Yuri. He is a year old from Renwick, West Virginia. 
being shown by Michelle Save. And the Pomeranians are really a dog that can be classified as often not knowing how small they are. Well, that's funny because that's what they tell us about Yuri mm -hmm. here. They say he's a small dog with a big dog <laughs> attitude. descended from Spitz-type dogs, often used for general farm work throughout Europe. Many came from Pomerania, which is a region in Germany, and they do also trace that breed ancestry back to other parts of Europe as well. And this is the Appen Pincher on the table right now. This is Sheena. She's two years old from Seekonk, Massachusetts. Being shown by Ernesto Lara. <laughs> Avon pinchers are often known as little monkey dogs. They have that very distinctive look that's sort of monkey-like. This breed first came over to the United States back in the 30s. Trans trace that ancestry back to Germany, Schnauzers and Pinschers. And here is the number one dog in the country right now. This is the Havanese. This is Bono. Bono's two years old. Being shown by his breeder, owner, and handler, Taffy McFadden. Bono was a last night best in show winner as well as going best in show on Wednesday here in Raleigh. So she's already got two best in shows so far this week in Raleigh, North Carolina. And the Havanese is the national dog of Cuba. Very popular in Cuba and in Europe. I didn't have few other names, previously known as the Havana Silk Dog, the Spanish Silk Poodle, and the Bichon Havanese. This breed did near extinction in Cuba back in the 50s. These people and their dogs really left the country during that Cuban Revolution. And a few of the dogs that ended up here in the U.S or used to establish breeding programs. Here's the Toy Fox Terrier, Flashy. She's three years old from Howell, New Jersey, being shown by Ashley Fusolino. The number one Toy Fox Terrier from 2018. Luella is a best of breed winner from the Westminster Kennel Club. And this breed was really an all-American breed developed by crossing that smooth fox terrier. Those smooth fox terriers with a combination of the toy breeds, including the miniature pincher, the Italian greyhound, the chihuahua, and the Manchester terrier. This is the Papillon on the table right now. Papillon, of course, means French in butterfly. They get their name from that butterfly look, from those beautiful ears. This is Z. Z is 16 months old. She's from Renfrew, Pennsylvania, being shown by Karen Mamano. Karen yes. tells us that her nickname is Sassy Pants. <laughs> These dogs are really happy, outgoing, like you can see there. Very alert and often considered one of the most intelligent breeds. They really excel at most of our dog sports. 
They can make excellent therapy and service junk too. Next up is the long coat chihuahua. This is Rocky. Rocky is 14 months old from Staunton, Virginia. Being shown by her owner, Pat Anders. Chihuahuas are another small breed that, unaware of their size, they definitely have a big That's dog personality. Sure. And the AKC standard does describe this breed as terrier-like. Ideally, that chihuahua is fearless and self-assured. Another very intelligent dog. Here's the Italian Greyhound. Boiler. From Vienna, Georgia, being shown by Justin Smithy. Greyhounds are very much like their older or their larger, excuse me, sighthound cousin. Very fast, very athletic. They excel at other dog sports, especially lure coursing. You know, Italian Greyhounds were always prize pets of nobility, too. Often a favorite of many of the European royals, like Frederick the Great, Catherine the Great, and then Queen Victoria. Here's the Yorkshire Terrier. This is Cece. Cece is 17 months old. And this group was developed from what are now extinct terrier breeds like the Clydesdale Terrier, the Paisley Terrier, the Old English Terrier, and the Waterside Terrier was back in Northern England in the 19th century. Yorkies are one of the most popular breeds registered with the American Kennel Club. They make great companions for smaller spaces like apartments. More of a moderate activity level, so them daily walk and play are just right for Yorkies. Here is the Japanese chin next up in the toy group. This is Georgie. Georgie is a year and a half old from Goose Creek, South Carolina being shown by his owner, Sue Flynn. This breed became very popular during Victorian times. And it was considered a prize, prized by the uh, Queen Alexandra and many other European royals. Now it's really unknown how the chin came to Japan, but that breed is likely considered to be a relative of the Pekingese. originally known as the Japanese Spaniel. It was until 1977. And our final dog in the toy group is the miniature pincher, Roman. Roman is 16 months old from Chesapeake, Virginia. Being shown by Sharon Knuckles. Miniature pinchers were developed in Germany, of course. One of several breeds that trace back to the old German pincher. Min 
Kingpins are often described as the king of toys. Very tough, fearless breed. They have excellent watchdog instinct. So that's it for the toy group. Our judge, Alan Odom, having another look at the beautiful group of toys that he has in front of him. He's pulling out Biggie the Pug and the Shih Tzu. The English Toy Spaniel, the Chinese Crested, the Toy Poodle, and the Brussels Griffon. The Havanese is also coming out, as is the Toy Fox Terrier and the Papillon. Looks like he's going to have them go one at a time around the ring by themselves, starting with Biggie the Pug. There goes the Shih Tzu. And the English Toy Spaniel. There goes the Chinese Crested. The Toy Poodle. The Brussels Griffon. There goes Bono, the Havanese, the number one dog in the country right now. The Toy Fox Terrier. And finally, the Papillon. If you're just joining us, we are looking at the toy group right now. So far today, we've seen the Hound Group, the Non-Sporting Group, the Working Group, the Sporting Group, and the Herding Group. Of course, we are here in Raleigh, North Carolina, watching the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show. Looks like our judge has chosen the winner. Looks like Bono the Havanese is the winner of the toy group with breeder and owner and handler Taffy McFadden. We're going to take another quick break here on AKC TV, and we'll be back in a few moments with the Terrier Group. certain breeds that are going to be great apartment dogs if you live in New York City. There's going to be other breeds that are fabulous working dogs for you if you're out on a ranch. He is my best friend. AKC.org is the best place to start because they have all the information about any breed you can think of. What's not to love about this face? <laughs> Roxy sure is having fun. Party's over, Six Legs. She's got Simperica now. Simpera what? Simperica is what kills ticks and fleas like us. Kills? Kills! Studies show at the end of the month, it kills more ticks in less time than Frontline Plus and NextGuard. Guess we should mosey on! See you never, Roxy. Use Simperica with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. The most common side effects are vomiting, diarrhea, and lethargy. Say goodbye to ticks and fleas with monthly Simperica chewables. We are AKC TV, the digital network for all things dogs. AKC TV, powered by the American Kennel Club, brings 130 years of dog expertise to dog lovers the world over. From a front row seat at world class dog events, to training and health tips for you and your pup, to programming created especially for you and your best friend. Find us online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. AKC TV, sit, stay, watch.
We all want more time, quality time to spend on what matters most to us. At the Canine Health Foundation, we're committed to helping dogs live longer, healthier lives. That means more playtime, more walk time, and more love time. Visit us to learn more. Welcome back to the Raleigh Kennel Club. Before we get started with the Terrier Group, joining us now we have Pam Beal from Take the Lead. She's talking to us about her non-for-profit. Can you speak with us a little bit about that, Pam? I'd be thrilled to. Thank you. Let me start by saying thank you for the opportunity to speak about Take the Lead, which is a wonderful organization that was founded 25 years ago by a great group of volunteers. We're still a 100% volunteer organization. We um, are in the sport to help the people with life-threatening or terminal illnesses, and we've also expanded our mission. So we're always looking for ways to help people, and we travel around the country trying to educate people and let them know about our mission. And Pam, how can people get involved? Um, please come up to our booth when you see us. Contact our office. We have an auto town, New York. And your website? www.takethelead.org. Great. Thank you so much, Pam. We're going to take a look back into the Terrier group right now as they just seem like they are just getting started. So we're going to take a look at these first dogs. And we are back with the Terry group right here. Looks like our dogs are just getting started in the ring. These dogs really have such endurance and love outdoor activities. They love to be exercised. They really do have a very nice, affectionate disposition. Very sociable, very loyal, very protective towards their families. This is Giselle. She's three years old from Lillington, North Carolina, being shown by Diego Garcia. This is the Carrie Blue Terrier up next in the Terrier group. A breed native to Ireland. Has a distinctive late blue color. This is Junior. He is three years old, being shown by Brittany Phelps. These are very closely related to the Irish Terrier and also the soft-coated Wheaton. Of course, developed back in Ireland in County Kerry, and that's where it got its name. And now we get a look at the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, another one of those Irish breeds. This is Kean. He is three years old. He's being shown by Tuesday Hannah. Wheatons have this very characteristic coat is soft and silkier in texture. Usually has a little bit of that wave that we see there. These dogs are really steady, self-confident, very sociable breed. Very happy and bouncy and exuberant as well. And there's the Staffordshire Bull Terrier on your screen. This is Stan. Dan is six years old, being shown by Emily Burden. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> this breed originated in the 19th century back in Staffordshire, England. Really popular breed in England. A little bit less common there in the U.S. Very strong and powerful for their size. Super 
athletic, powerful breed. Here's the American Hairless Terrier. As their name implies, they are hairless. Although they do come in a coated variety, so for whatever sense that makes. <laughs> With that lack of coat, that really does pose a nice, uh, less of a grooming situation. Less of a grooming situation. Great option for um, folks with allergies. This dog originally developed from that rat terrier. Natural variation of that ice cream. This is the Bedlington Terrier on the table right now. This is Lily. Lily's just nine months old. From Hendersonville, North Carolina, being shown by her breeder and owner, Blake Hill. Bedlington Terriers are very, very fast and very agile. You have that little curve rise on their back. Similar to some sight hounds, which allows for that speed and agility. After they came over from England here in America, it really attracted some fanciers, including the Rockefeller family. They owned some of the breed's most prominent show dogs at the time. This is the miniature bull terrier on your screen right now. This is Vibe. He is three years old from Waverly, Georgia. Being shown by Blair Aguilard. And the standard for these dogs really describes them as just full of fire, courageous, a quintessential terrier. Here's the Welsh Terrier, next up in the Terrier group. This is Dazzle. From Knoxville, Tennessee, he is three years old, being shown by his handler, Tracy Zaris. Currently the number one Welsh Terrier in the country right now, one of the top Terriers. A really intelligent breed, very alert, very courageous, and just willing to please. But of course, like a lot of the terrier breeds, they have a very high activity level, and they really are diligent workers, so they really need that channel. A very old breed that was traditionally known as the Old English Terrier or even the Black and Tan Wire Terrier, Wire Hair Terrier. Next up in the Terrier group is the Smooth Fox Terrier. This is Wicked. She is three years old from Seagrove, North Carolina, being shown by Whitney Perry. Fox Terriers were bred to work with the hounds hunting with the horses. And the brief exact origin, experts can really only speculate on it, but the beagle and the bull terrier are thought to be in that background. So we say living with a dog like that, it's never boring. Here's the Scottish Terrier on the table right now. This is Topper. Topper's three years old, here all the way from Seattle, Washington, with his handler, Ed Cook. Just starting his special career.
Scottish Terriers, of course, very recognizable. There have been a few famous Scotties in the White House. And the Scottish Terrier shares a little bit of its heritage with other working terriers of Scotland. Karen and the White Highland, West Highland White Terrier. This is the Rat Terrier on the table right now. This is Victor. Victor is a four years old from Cary, North Carolina. Being shown by his owner, Karen Bose. The Rat Terrier, really a traditional farm dog. It was used as a watchdog, ratter, and hunting dog. They were developed back in the 19th century by crossing fox terriers with other terrier breeds, like the Manchester Terrier, the Bull Terrier, and what's now the extinct White English Terrier. Here's the Lakeland Terrier, next up in the terrier group. This is Ari. Ari is two years old. And the Lakeland Terriers are one of the oldest terrier breeds. They come from Cumberland, England. Developed by farmers to hunt and control vermin. Very bold, very friendly and confident dogs. Here's the Border Terrier, next up in the ma'am, Terrier ma'am, group. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. This is Ari. He's two years old from Columbus, Ohio, being shown by Kathy Kate Musto. This breed is considered one of Britain's oldest terriers. They were actually developed along the border of England and Scotland. And those breeding them were looking for a dog that was rugged, resourceful, not small enough to squeeze into a foxhole, but large enough to keep up with a horse. They have that distinctive otter-like head and face. Such a defining characteristic of the breed. Here's the Australian Terrier. Almost all of the Terrier breeds originated in England and the British Isles. There are a few exceptions, the Australian Terrier being one of them, developed in Australia. This is Bullet. He is four years old from Staten Island, New York, being shown by Adam Peterson. We've got another New Yorker down here. <laughs> We're not the only one. We're not the only ones. <laughs> and these dogs absolutely love outdoor adventures, but they really are house dogs and they need that constant contact with their owners, as well as a lot of supervision to prevent those bad habits. Here's the miniature Schnauzer on the table right now. Breed native to Germany. This is Bombay. A hometown dog right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. He's five years old. Being shown by Lisa Sarvis. Really, the goal here was to produce a bit of a smaller schnauzer from the miniature schnauzer. So, so they crossed the standard schnauzers with the Appen Pinchers and Poodles. This breed first seen in Europe in the late 1800s. Really have become pretty popular all over the world. 
Next up is the Glen of Amal Terrier. This is William. That's a pretty great name. <laughs> William is six years old, another New York City dog. Another William that comes from New York. There you go. The Glen of Amal Terriers are one of the four native Irish terrier breeds. Of course, many of them we see coming from England. Glen of Amal Terriers easily adapt to country or city lifestyle. More moderate activity level than some of the other terriers. Here's the Russell Terrier on the table right now. This is Jane. Jane is two and a half years old. Being shown by Chris Manilopoulos, who's also one of her owners. This is another of those breeds that originates in England, originated in England, derived from strains of the Parson John Russell's Terrier. And of course, it is considered a separate breed. There are three different coat types that the Russell Terrier can come in. This is the smooth type here where the coat is dense, short, and coarse. Often we see them in the rough coat or the broken coat. So fun to see the smooth coat type here. And this is the Cairn Terrier on your screen right now breed, of course, we all know from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the Cairn Terrier's history traces back to working terriers of Scotland. They were used for hunting, vermin control, and companionship. Their terriers, they really only have a moderate activity level. They are active and playful, but they do adapt well to urban lifestyle. Here's the Sky Terrier. Next up in the terrier group, this is Thule. Another local dog from right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Being shown by her owner, Ginger Lindsay. This breed was developed from Scotland, developed in Scotland. And that breed was used for centuries to hunt vermin underground. As you see those short legs, they were really ideal for digging. And that protective double coat really helps it make it impervious to that harsh climate and terrain. Next up is the Norfolk Terrier. This is Frosty. Frosty is just 16 months old. From Peterborough, New Hampshire. Being shown by Ernesto Lara. Frosty is owned by Pam Beal, who we just met with Marissa from mm -hmm. Take the Lead, a really a exceptional organization within the sport of dogs that gives back so much. Always happy to hear from organizations and people like that. Have interviews like that here on NKC TV. <laughs> Norfolk Terriers, as you can see here with Frosty, very happy with their constantly wagging tail, <laughs> but a high activity level. They definitely need some good long walk, play, all those activities to get that energy out. And our final terrier in the terrier group is the Norwich Terrier, Isaac. Isaac is four and a half years old, being shown by Taffy McFadden. We just saw Taffy win the toy group with Bono the Havanese. Sir, 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 sir. 
Isaac was the Terrier Group winner at the AKC National Championship in December down in Orlando. When they were first developed, these dogs were really used as stable dogs and vermin hunters. That was before becoming popular as a companion dog. Very inquisitive, very independent. They have those strong hunting instincts. Isaac is our last dog in the Terrier group, and our judge, Debbie Campbell Freeman, is starting to make a cut here, a short list of Terriers to look at some more. She's pulled out the Airedale Terrier, the American Staffordshire Terrier, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the Miniature Bull Terrier, and the Welsh Terrier, as well as the Norfolk and the Norwich Terrier. If you're just joining us, thank you so much for doing so. You are joining us in the Terrier group right now. So far today, we've seen the toy group, the hound group, the non-sporting group, the working group, the sporting group, and the herding group, making this our final group before best in show this evening. Close to 1,800 dogs started the day, and after this Terrier group, we'll be down to the last seven. Looks like these Terriers are going to go around one at a time for our chance for our judge to have another look at each of them. Starting with the Airedale. There goes the American Staffordshire Terrier. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The Miniature Bull Terrier. The Welsh Terrier. There goes the Norfolk Terrier. And our final dog in the Terrier group, the Norwich Terrier. there. This is the last group before we get to best in show, so do not go anywhere just yet. And the Welsh Terrier is getting pulled out first, followed by the American Staffordshire Terrier, the Norwich Terrier, and the Norfolk Terrier, and it looks like that's it. The Welsh Terrier is the winner of the Terrier group. We're going to take one final break, and we will be back to watch Best in Show. My favorite part about being a breeder is putting that puppy into a person's hands. The relationship between the owner and breeder is really important. It's something that's ongoing for the life of the dog. Some of them live in my home. Some of them I don't ever want to let go. Running around and playing with dogs all week long, it's nothing better. The most important thing that you're going to want is a healthy dog. When we sell a puppy to a new family, they become part of our family. We're there to help them for the life of the dog. Is your pet trying to tell you something? The Pet Comfort Feeding System by WeatherTech. 100% non-toxic and lead-free. Made from U.S. stainless steel and certified by the NSF. Designed to trap spills and messes. Trust the way you feed your pet. Choose the perfect size and color at PetComfort.com. AKC TV, the digital network for all things dogs, brings you AKC Live, featuring canine events from around the country. All the action in your own home. Sit ringside at your favorite dog show. Get a front row seat at agility and obedience trials on AKC Live. Only on AKC TV, powered by the American Kennel Club. Find us anytime, anywhere, online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. AKC Live, only on AKC TV. Dogs can't brush. With fresh breath by Tropiclean, they don't have to. Clean teeth, healthy mouth, fresh breath. No brushing required. You make the moments, we make them fresh. Over 2,800 dogs compete 
but only one can be named Westminster Best in Show champion. He's best in show. Congratulations, King. Thanks for making Purina Pro Plan your nutrition of choice. Welcome back to AKC TV Live. Happy to have you with us. Thanks for sticking with us until now. We are here at the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show in North Carolina. Very excited to be here, and we have made it through all seven groups, so you are almost there to getting that Best in Show winner. So far today, we have seen the Australian Shepherd win the Herding Group, and we saw the German Short-Haired Pointer win the Sporting Group. Next, we saw the Black Russian Terrier win the Working Group, followed by the Standard Poodle winning the Non-Sporting Group. After that, the Afghan Hound took the Hound Group, the Havanese won the Toy Group, and the Welsh Terrier won the Terrier Group. Now it looks like we are waiting on those dogs to enter the ring. And it seems they're being called over the speaker right now. Our judge for best in show this evening is Michelle Scott from Ontario, Canada. She's going to have each dog come in one at a time. Thank you for joining us here on AKC TV. I'm Marissa Sarbach with Bill Ellis. We are your hosts for today. Excited to see who's going to take best in show here at the Raleigh Kennel Club. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure to go over to our website, akc.tv. You can also download the AKC TV app on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, as well as our brand new mobile app. Find it in the App Store and on Google Play. Here's our judge, Michelle Scott, with Joe Chairman, Dennis our McCoy. Our show judge has asked me to please tell you that she has a wonderful specimen of the animals in the ring, but she has to excuse it for a conflict of interest. She's going to ask all of you to give it a round of applause as animals goes around. Thank you. So the Havanese with breeder, owner, and handler, Taffy McFadden. Conflict of the in of interest with our best in show judge Michelle Scott. So we'll take a lap around the ring, and Tappy will excuse herself, and we'll get underway with the rest of the beautiful dogs here in best in show. Our first dog up in best in show is the standard poodle. The standard poodle is Steeler. Steelers, two and a half years old from Toronto, Canada, being shown by Sarah Perchik. As I mentioned before, he's had quite an international career. In addition to being champion in this country, he's an English, Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, and Italian champion. Won the group at the World Dog Show in 2017. Was second in the group at Crufts in England in 2018. and was the top standard poodle in both Norway and Sweden in 2018. And now having a very successful career here in this country. And there's a look at the beautiful Afghan hound, Bella. Bella's being shown by Lenny Brown. Well, the Afghan hounds are often known as true canine aristocrats. Really elegant and really dignified. You can see it there. These dogs are really bred to work independently instead of taking cues from people although they are extremely affectionate with their owners. <laughs> Next up 
is the Black Russian Terrier. Ollie from Moorhead, North Carolina with handler Oranda Glenn. <coughs> These dogs were developed back in Russia after World War II, considered an all-purpose, hardy, very trainable military and police dog. What was great about them was that they could withstand the Russian climate. This breed gradually gained a following back in Eastern Europe and then was exported to the United States in the 80s. Very intelligent, and trainable breed. They are alert, confident, devoted family dog. They make great watchdog. They are large and powerful, so training and early socialization are a must. Next up is the Australian Shepherd from the Herding Group. This is Malcolm from Augusta, Georgia, with his owner and handler, Stacy Hayes. Malcolm also participates in rally and herding sports, showing how versatile Australian Shepherds are. They really have such a strong mental and physical drive that they want to work all day. So you really have to channel that energy. They can do it in many directions. They're really trainable. Very intelligent and versatile. They do very well in a lot of our dog sports. Next up from the sporting group is the German short-haired pointer. This is Tori. Tori is three years old from St. Louis, Missouri. Being shown by her breeder, owner, and her handler, Lucretia Conrad. Tori was the national specialty winner in 2018. National specialties are shows hosted by each breed's parent club. So in this case, the German short-haired pointer club of America. So their national show each year just for that breed. The German Shorthead Pointers, extremely intelligent and willing to please. <laughs> These dogs are so versatile. A great hunting dog for trailing, pointing, even retrieving on land or water. And of course, experts tell you, when they're young, they may have trouble staying focused, so you really need to make sure you're teaching them well and quickly and thoroughly. Here's the Welsh Terrier from the Terrier group. We just saw Dazzle win that group. Dazzle's from Knoxville, Tennessee. He's three years old, being shown by his handler, Tracy Zaris. Dazzle's currently the number one Welsh Terrier, one of the top Terriers in the country. Now these are dogs with such a high activity level. They really are such diligent workers. They absolutely love to work.
that's it for our best in show lineup here at the Raleigh Kennel Club. Our judge, Michelle Scott, has gone over each dog in best in show. She's going to have them all go around one at a time again. <laughs> Starting with the standard poodle, Steeler. There goes the Afghan Hound, Bella. The Black Russian Terrier is next. There goes Ollie. There's the Australian Shepherd, Malcolm. There goes the German Short Haired Pointer, Tori. And finally, the Welsh Terrier, Dazzle. So our judge, Michelle Scott, is going to make her decision and mark it down in her judge's book. She'll award two dogs this evening. She'll start with reserve best in show, and then she will award best in show. If you're just tuning in or just catching up with us, I'm Marissa Sarback here with Bill Ellis from AKC TV. We are waiting for best in show, that big moment. Looks like our judge is ready. And of course, stay with us after that best in show ribbon is awarded because Bill Ellis is gonna be heading out to the floor to see if he can speak with the winner. Best in show is the Afghan Hound. <laughs> the best in show winner is the Black Russian Terrier. Big congratulations to them. Stay with us. Bill Ellis is heading out onto the floor right now as we speak to see if he can get an interview with that handler for the Black Russian Terrier. Quite the day here with quite the amazing group of beautiful dogs. Very excited to see that here on AKC TV. All right, we're sending it over to you, Bill. I'm here with our best in show judge, Michelle Scott and our best in show winning handler, Randa Glenn, and Ollie, the Black Russian Terrier. Michelle, what made the difference for Ollie tonight that made him win best in show? Uh, he's just a beautiful type and so good on his feet. He's in lovely condition, he deserves it. And, and Randa, tell us a little bit about Black Russian Terriers you live with Ollie. What do they like to live with? What's the one thing you would want someone to know about Black Russian Terriers? They're actually very easy to live with. You just have to know that they are a guard dog and that, that that's a purpose. But they're, they love their family. They're very much a one-person one family. Well, it was really fun to watch. Thank you both so much. I'm going to send it back over to Marissa to take us out for the evening. All right, thanks so much, Bill. A huge congratulations, and thank you so much for everybody staying with us here tonight. We know it was very exciting. We love that build-up getting to Best in Show. We saw a lot of dogs coming through, almost 1,800 dogs, and it was very exciting. So for the entire team here at AKC TV, I'm Marissa Sarbach. Thank you for joining us here at the Raleigh Kennel Club Dog Show. Have a great evening.